Hey everybody, this is Maddie, and welcome back to another episode of Tech Insights for Visionaries. This is a podcast where we cover the latest technological trends and how they affect the lives of businesses and consumers. This podcast is produced by a team of software engineers from MobyDev, software development company. They share their experience in machine learning, augmented reality, and other data science technologies. This and other episodes are posted as articles on mobydev.biz. For more details, be sure to check them out. Hey there, this is Sean. And today, we're going to talk about alternatives for Apache Cordova. With cross-platform apps being a competitive technology in 2021, the sunset of Apache Cordova is a really important topic in many industries. Can you remind us briefly about what Apache Cordova is and why this change is important? Apache Cordova is a framework for developing cross-platform mobile applications. It uses HTML5 and JavaScript and can run on Android and iOS devices. However, it is set to be retired soon, and developers will no longer be able to use Apache Cordova to develop and work on apps. Apache Cordova was introduced four years ago, in a time where many developers were making the switch from web development to mobile app development. Not only were developers looking for cross-compatibility between Android and iOS, but Windows Mobile was also a minor competitor at the time. Importantly, there was a lot of support for Apache Cordova in the Visual Studio App Center. There were many core technologies, like CodePush, that were constructed with Apache Cordova and React Native. CodePush enabled update deployment directly to users' devices. However, Apache Cordova's popularity is decreasing greatly. Statista reports that its use by software developers has fallen from 29% to 16% from 2019 to 2021. I see. So the fall in popularity is why they're retiring it? Pretty much. Now that Cordova SDK calls consist of less than 1% of Visual Studio's App Center service, App Center announced the withdrawal of Apache Cordova support. This means that you can no longer develop Apache Cordova apps using the portal, CLI, or API with App Center. App Center also will not accept calls from the Cordova SDK starting in April of 2022. From then on, Availability and interaction of existing services cannot be guaranteed. With Apache Cordova becoming obsolete, what will happen to existing apps and services running on the framework? There are two ways to go here. It's not the greatest idea to continue to run on legacy frameworks, so finding a suitable alternative is important. However, if you need to, it will still be possible to develop apps with Cordova by simply avoiding Visual Studio App Center. This means changing the software development pipeline a bit, I see. What would you have to do to develop with Apache Cordova instead, now that it has been discontinued by App Center? To do that, we would need to avoid Microsoft development products like GitHub. At MobyDev, we don't need to fully reconfigure our software development cycle because we already use our own infrastructure instead. GitLab is open source, which means that it doesn't rely on Microsoft's rules. We also build systems to set up a CI CD pipeline. However, this is not the best solution for every business. Instead of looking for ways to avoid App Center, it's important to consider whether or not Apache Cordova has a future at all. I agree. If Apache Cordova doesn't have a future, it doesn't make much sense to me why we should go through a ton of effort to keep developing with it. So what does Cordova's future look like? Well, Microsoft's decision to restrict the development of Apache Cordova notably calls into question the usefulness of Apache Cordova in recent years. Back when the framework was first introduced by Natobi in 2009, one of the key considerations was to provide app developers with device APIs that enabled accessing key functions directly from JavaScript. When these features were combined with UI frameworks like jQuery Mobile or Sencha Touch, a mobile app could have been developed with the help of basic web technologies. These days, jQuery Mobile and Sencha Touch are obsolete. When compared to modern single-page application frameworks like React.js, AngularJS, Vue.js, and others. But what about Apache Cordova? There are still applications on the market that use the technology that have already been developed. These will need to be maintained with improvements and fixes. Cordova Android 10.1.1 was released in September of this year. So what you're saying is that Apache Cordova is still relevant for existing projects, but shouldn't be used to develop new software? 
Yes, exactly. In that case, what will businesses use instead in Cordova's place? That's a good question. There are several alternatives to Apache Cordova out there. A few of our best suggestions are Flutter, Xamarin, React Native, Ionic, and NativeScript. However, they all have their own pros and cons, and it's important to research them to see which one is right for your needs. In that case, it's a good idea for us to compare each of the options against Apache Cordova to see which one will best fit your needs. This ought to be helpful if you are looking to upgrade your existing Cordova app or if you're looking to start a brand new project. The first one that we'll talk about is Flutter. Flutter is currently the most versatile framework to build UI with. It has a full set of material and Cupertino widgets that aren't provided by other frameworks. In Flutter, UI is consistent across different devices and vendors, and conceptually it is similar to React.js. Flutter, based on Dart, currently shows the best performance, and performance is the same as in the case of native Android or iOS apps. Flutter architecture enables apps based on it to work with the same performance, or even faster, than Java or Kotlin Android apps. The UI is very versatile and allows us to build UI in the same way that the native platforms do. Through this, we can define custom painted views and custom layouts without the need to tap into native platforms. Sounds like this can really help speed up the process of building an app, as well as making it compatible across Android and iOS platforms, just like how Apache Cordova could. Yep. Flutter also enables developers to build modules and views from native views. The possibility of reusing native libraries is derived from this as well. The Dart and Flutter community is smaller than the larger JavaScript community, but it is being expanded fast by native developers. At the moment, it's much larger than the native script community and almost as large as the React native community. Releases to Flutter are stable and won't break apps. The changes are released by Google and Apple in a timely manner as well. Developer preview versions for creating web applications and desktop applications are also notable. What about React Native? How can we leverage that for our benefit in place of Apache Cordova? Well, the UI is flexible enough with React Native to cover the majority of cases required for developing an app. It doesn't have a full set of native component counterparts, as they are usually substituted with community plugins. Based on JavaScript, React Native uses bridge architecture for all views. This leads to some issues with implementing animations and working with views that report updates. For example, the scroll view position. How customizable is React Native? The customizability of React Native can be assessed in terms of custom paint usage. It's accessible, yet limited, and has poor documentation. There's no way to define custom layouts without opting into a native platform. Functionality that allows building modules and views from native view and reusing of native libraries is the same as in the case of Flutter. What about stability? Well, React Native is in beta at the moment. Because of that, the framework has some hiccups and issues to overcome related to new changes in native platforms. However, it generally has good stability. Maintainers are not always able to address issues in a timely manner, and often a community helps to fix issues in third-party libraries. In React Native, it is possible to share only the logic part of the application with the web. Ionic is another option. How does it compare to Cordova? It's ironic that you mention that. <laughs> because Ionic was once a UI kit for Cordova and Angular apps. However, since May of this year, Ionic has moved away from Cordova. That's really interesting. In Ionic, it's possible to use any UI library from the web. However, the patterns for web and mobile devices are different. So these libraries are usually not optimized for mobile devices. This causes a lot of issues with UX and performance. Ionic is based on JavaScript and uses wrapped architecture for the whole application. This leads to a lot of issues when implementing heavy computing or working in hidden mode. On the other hand, the UI is extremely flexible and allows for construction of UI the same way that JavaScript applications do. This makes it possible to define custom layouts without the need to opt into native platforms and write native plugins. You mentioned earlier that JavaScript has a huge community. I'm sure this means that there is a lot more community support for a framework like Ionic, right? Definitely. The community of React Native has a huge set of available plugins that can help here with Ionic. The main issues have to do with security restrictions and the huge amount of time required to polish the application 
for each individual device. NativeScript is another option. What makes it different from the competition? NativeScript is fairly similar to React Native when it comes to UI, in that it can build on top of native views. However, because of this, it has the same issues as React Native. NativeScript allows using Angular 2 Plus, Vue.js, and their own UI frameworks to help build UI. Since it's based on JavaScript, NativeScript has more limited performance compared to React Native. NativeScript also doesn't provide developers with the ability to use custom paint and to define new layouts. NativeScript can build models and view plugins using its own mechanism. Native methods on views can be called directly from JavaScript. Compared to Flutter and React Native, it's harder to write plugins since they use JavaScript to match native platform languages, Java, OBC, with its own syntax. This is very time-consuming compared to directly using native modules on other platforms. NativeScript has the ability to leverage JavaScript libraries that don't rely on a document object model, or DOM. With a smaller community and smaller number of plugins compared to React Native, more work will have to be done to make NativeScript fit your unique solution. There are also issues with memory leaks. This can be concerning if developers are not familiar with the framework at a high level and don't know how to mitigate them. What about Xamarin? The UI in Xamarin apps can lead to incredible responsiveness. To create UIs, developers use XAML, or C Sharp. C Sharp wrappers allow replicating native performance. With Xamarin, developers may build distinctly various interfaces for platforms. This makes it much faster and efficient compared to Apache Cordova. Xamarin and React Native both offer near native performance. C Sharp and .NET serve for the creation of one single application logic. Requests are sent by an app to API interfaces on the device. Xamarin Core comprises compiled code, and developers experienced in .NET can freely work with the framework. So you can make applications with .NET, but can you also make them in .com and .org? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. With Xamarin.Forms, prototyping is greatly simplified. A single interface can be shared across all platforms. The unavailability of some open-source libraries and third-party integration tools are some of the main downsides of Xamarin. But otherwise, it's a tool we definitely recommend. Now that we've seen all these alternatives, I think it's safe to say that new projects definitely don't need to be started in Apache Cordova anymore. With better performance, features, and community support, these competitors are paving the way toward the future of cross-compatibility. Definitely. Enterprises need to stay up to date with the latest technologies so that they don't fall behind in the market. Avoiding outdated technologies is an essential strategy. It's also important to leverage a single tech stack for all their products so that they don't incur the cost of switching stacks down the road. And our experience here at MobyDev definitely shows that this is true. The market is changing rapidly. Whether or not you're upgrading your existing Apache Cordova app to use modern technologies, or if you're starting something new, Consulting experienced professional programmers like our cross-platform development team at MobyDev can help you focus on your needs. Together, we can come up with solutions that can achieve your goals and a timely return on investment. That rounds up our discussion about the retirement of Apache Cordova and what alternative frameworks there are to choose from. Thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and share this episode with friends and colleagues so that they can be up to date on the latest trends in technology as well. Be sure to join us next time to learn more about the latest technologies and news that's powering our world forward. Until next time.